Uh, how was practice today? The mood of the team? Good. I mean, look, we've had some interesting weather patterns. I mean, you know, it's not raining, sun's coming out, field's in good condition, guys are working hard, so it was good, good training day today. Ciao, Paulo. Left practice early? Yeah, he's dealing with some knee issues. He's got a little swelling in there, uh, but he should be fine. How is uh, Reed looking? Reed's looking really close. Uh, I will have a discussion with the guys uh, about his participation in training either today or tomorrow in full. Excuse me, tomorrow or Thursday in full. And if he can complete at least one day of full training and fitness test, I'll put him on the bench. Looking back at the film from about what happened in the first 20, 25 minutes or so. Oh, I think they outworked us. I mean, we we worked today on the tactics of what worked in the first game, what didn't work in the second game. I think those were minor tweaks. I think we have a good game plan. The teams know each other well. I just think that if you look at the two games, in the first game, we made plays. They didn't. You know, Ferreira's got, you know, and then the game down there, they made plays. We didn't. We made one, you know, fortunate back pass. Jordan made that play through his strength and power. But then there was an offside. There was a ball that knew who played to Christian. There was a scramble. There was Obed's run. Raul get his toe on it. We didn't make that second play to get us to 2-2. Two -two. So you credit them, you know, they made plays and we didn't. You list off the chances there, uh, Raul's uh, PK that could have been, they went to VAR on that. What did you see um, on that play? How do you read? Well, I saw that Raul got a shirt tucked. Mm. And in a lot of other games, that's going to get called a penalty. But the explanation was given to me that, you know, he wasn't going to get the ball, the goalkeeper caught the ball, and so that's why they elected not to do that. Now, I would argue, I would say, well, what if the goalkeeper, you know, went through his hand or something happened, but then maybe he calls a penalty if that does happen. I mean, it's kind of a gray area. I, mean, I don't know all the rules in the NFL, you know, I don't know any of that, but, you know, I've seen that, I've seen that called, let me tell you that. What would you say are kind of the lessons learned from match two as you look ahead to Friday? Well, just making sure that the guys come out with the right energy. You know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make sure that without exposing ourselves, that we come out on the front foot and you know play the way we want to play, dictate tempo, up tempo, good transition moments. You know, we're gonna work on our set pieces tomorrow and Thursday. You know, be a little bit more dangerous there, cognizant of that. It appeared like you guys had a, more trouble with their press in the second game than you did on the first game. Uh, what were your takes from that? I think I think you had, you know, Josh was doing a good job the last couple of games of getting forward, but his first job is to kind of command the middle with JP. And I think we lost a little bit of the middle of the field there. Um, and again, their front three did a better job in how they pressed, both from a physical perspective and a tactical perspective. So we'll make adjustments to that and we'll see. It seemed like Jordan and Raul up top didn't quite work as expected or as you wanted it. Yeah, sometimes that those moments in the games, you know, I brought him on fairly early because I wanted to give Raul a chance to kind of get feel the game a little bit. And we've actually trained that formation but it just didn't manifest itself. I think there was too many moments, or again, where we gave the ball away. You know, we didn't have anybody really truly on the left-hand side. I mean, knew who was out there. Uh, but there were some challenges with that, for sure. Jackson uh, talked about because the, maybe one of the lessons he takes from the, uh, the turnovers was that just being a little bit more willing to kick it away. But how do you go about balancing your strength, which is sometimes playing through those moments, Pressure, yeah. and and with you know not knowing when to take risks. Well, that's that is the trick. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna that's gonna make him go from a really good MLS center back to maybe a really good 
center back somewhere else. I mean, that's the that's the decision making that he has to learn. I think it's I think it's true with all the young players. And look, Josh is super talented. Obed, they're super talented players. They can wiggle out of things. But when is it the right moment just to play simple one touch, connect the pass, and go the other way? You know, that's what those guys need to have that little bit of you know game experience to push them to a higher level. So that's not something they can hone in and practice and you try to simulate that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the coaching the coaching staff did a drill the other day where, you know, the two pivots couldn't move out of a box, you know, and they, they got to play in that area of the field and then they limit touches in that area of the field just so that they play faster. I mean, those are the things we do all, all the time. But the game experience is what really they have to get at. Jackson said that part of what he recognized was they were going, they were forcing him to his left side. Yep. So is yep. that something where you need somebody else to kind of yep. be an outlet pivot, pass for him? So yep. they can just bump it in there and go out because Ferreira was taken up that okay. angle. When, when a player goes from a, such a good game like Nuhu did to a game where he struggled in the second one, do you take some time this week to talk to him or oh, yeah. anything like that? And, are, and what goes already, into that? We already had that conversation. That's done and dusted. Another thing, um, it seemed like whenever Dallas played in a deeper block, Jordan kind of struggled because there's no space for him to run into um, as maybe pivoting in link plays and necessarily his forte. Are you concerned that Dallas is going to come in and play in that deep of a block and make you guys struggle there? He can do it. Look, if the wide guys are affected, you know, and Jordan's yeah, strength is maybe not link up play, but he certainly can. I mean, he's got a big frame, he can pull the defenders off. Uh, but if Jordan's occupying the two center backs and your wide play and you're changing the point of attack is good and fast, then he will do what many good forwards do, is stay central, and hopefully he gets good service. And you saw his heading ability in game one. You see his ability to get beyond players when the ball comes on the floor in behind the defense. He has those things in his toolbox. So maybe he doesn't have that here on top of the 18, but he certainly has stuff inside the 18 to be effective. The continuity there was a almost go where Alex Christian went inside. Alex overlapped. He gave him the pass, and then he had that crossover. And then I think Albert kind of missed it. Is that something that you're looking at in terms of maybe? Christian? You mean the shot that Albert took from top of the box? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean Albert scored there. I think against St. Louis to get us started from that same spot. I thought Albert maybe could have taken a touch because the ball was coming at him pretty fast. Yep. But uh, look, Christian and. Alex, I've said it enough. I mean, they practice that stuff in their backyard when they were eight and ten years old. I mean, they got a good sense of where one guy is, the other guy's going to go here, and vice versa. Do you feel that you 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 needed more people in the box then, if you're being successful on the right side? Yeah, Leo Chu has to be in there. Albert has to be a late runner. Josh can be a late runner for sure. I'm doing like a playoff spotlight feature on Christian. Who I, I know you love talking. Aside from what he brings on the field, which I think we all see, how much do you think his kind of just leadership and presence has offered a boost over this last, like, like meet run you guys were on? And, and yeah. Play? So that was our first loss in 11 games. And so as bad as we felt, Ari was kind of like, let's, 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 let's readjust the lens here. I mean, that's a pretty good run, one loss in 11 games right Christian certainly has you know come back and helped us in those in those games uh, we're still a team sport but he provides leadership maybe not as like a vocal leader like Steph or maybe Nico or Roman in his prime or Ozzy in his prime but he provides the leadership on the field he doesn't take plays off he goes every single play, different areas of the field. He's always covering for his brother. I don't know if you noticed that when Alex is, you know, 1v1 out there, Christian always gets back to help. I mean, he does all the little things, 
that make a team better. And I think that's his leadership. Obviously, you guys didn't come out with you know the result you wanted on Saturday, but are there any you know positives that you kind of hope to carry over into Friday's game? Yeah, I mean, look, we didn't play well the first 20 minutes. Let's, let's make that brutally clear. But then the response after that were, was pretty good. So we just can't fall in that. Uh, is game three elimination round, and you got a couple of guys that have been kind of crucial for this team in the past years, and Raul and Nico. Um, how? I won't hesitate. I won't hesitate. We'll see how the game goes, but you know, there's the other X factors of penalties too. So. And how do you feel like they've both taken this new super sub role that they kind of taken? Like it. <laughs> they don't like it, but they're team guys, and they're going to do whatever it takes to help the team win.